Hey, everybody. I am Carol Fox Hendricks, and I'm with the Brazos Valley Art League, and I want to welcome you to our very first ever live event, uh, Create a Portfolio Website, Getting Started with Fine Art America. Now, since this is our very first live event, now there may be a few technical glitches. Let me just um, let you know that we are recording this, and we'll put a link up on our website so that you can find it later if uh, for some reason you get disconnected or like I said we have uh, some glitches. I know everyone has been using the internet more and more recently and so there is about a seven to ten second delay between when I say something and when you actually see it. So if you enter something into the chat area I may not see it right away but I will try to get to it. I'm going to go ahead and leave myself in this little small window because it's not important that you see me. It's more important that you hear me. And if it becomes too much of a bog, I may disable the video altogether, but you'll still be able to see what's on my screen. So if you are here, let, let us know, type something in the uh, comments area and let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, this is a presentation from the Brazos Valley Art League. Here's our contact information. If you want more information about the Art League, you can go to our website at bvartleague.org or email us bvaltexas at gmail.com. And I'll put this up again uh, before we are gone today. So the first question is, why do you want to put your art online? And I think maybe now, given our current situation, people are thinking more and more about how they might be able to share their art if they can't do it in person. And so putting it online is certainly one way to do that. You can increase your exposure, not only to um, galleries, collectors, potential customers, but you can even just share your art with your family and friends in a way that you might not be able to otherwise. So there are a couple of options, and I'm sorry that this is, um, the video is kind of overlaying the title here, but option one is, you know, you can build it yourself. And if you have the skills and you're inclined to do so, you can use sites like Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, GoDaddy, and et cetera. Just know that this requires a very specialized skill set. And if you are not willing to put in the time to learn how to do this, um, you're going to become frustrated pretty easily. Also, these are some of the more, th they tend to be more costly, especially because none of these that I've listed up there, which are ones that I've all used, none of these are designed specifically for artists. And so you have to do some sort of finagling and, and know which options and features to use to be able to make it work for you as an artist. Option two is to use a turnkey service. Now that's something that is already set up. All you have to do is upload your photos, answer a few questions, and you've got your website. Usually there, is, there are no web design skills needed, and you really don't have to make a lot of decisions regarding the site design or the layout, and usually you can get them up and running pretty quickly. And so that brings us to Fine Art America. And why are we talking about Fine Art America? Primarily um, because many of my artist friends already use it. So I know that it's well accepted by the artist community. And if you choose to spend the $30 a year for the uh, premier subscription, you can get a couple of extra features but I will tell you the free version lets you do quite a bit and so even at $30 a year I think it's quite a bargain so I'm gonna walk you through 
with just these slides for the first part of creating your account. And then if the internet gods are smiling down upon us, we'll go live and we'll actually upload an image and uh, go through the steps that way. So the first thing that you have to do with any, any site is to create an account. So you go to fineartamerica.com and sorry, the overlay is a little off here, but you click on sell, S-E-L-L, -L. okay? This is the homepage of fineamerica.com. So you click the sell option because you are going to be selling your items. Now, even if you don't want to sell your items, <clears throat> you have to approach this as if you are. And, you know, it doesn't cost you anything extra to put your pricing on there. And, hey, you know, you might make a buck or two. So once you click on sell, you're then taken to this screen and it welcomes you and you, they want you to identify yourself as either an artist, a photographer, some sort of a visual artist, or whether you are a gallery. For our purposes, we're artists. So we're going to select the artist option. And now you're presented with the screen where you fill out your information. First name, last name, your address, email, confirm you're not a robot, and then you accept their terms of use. So go ahead and read those before you accept it. Next, you are presented with this screen and it shows you eight steps that they want you to complete when setting up your Fine Art America shop. However, we are going to just go through the first three today. Um, we've already completed the sign up. We'll walk through the, uh, how to upload your profile picture. And um, we're going to spend much time, much of the time today on creating your first product. We're not going to talk about entering a biography, find and follow your friends, joining a group, joining a contest, or joining an online discussion. All of those are really optional. I would urge you, if you are interested in selling anything, to enter a biography. Uh, one that helps you kind of make a connection with your customers. All right, uploading a profile picture. Now these are the specifications for the profile picture that you upload. The file either needs to be a .jpg or .gif file. It cannot be any larger than 10 megabytes and it needs to be at least 600 by 600 pixels. It can be larger, but if it's smaller, you're not going to like the way that your profile image um, appears. And so all of that is really specified here. So the way that you do this is you click the choose file button and then you browse through your computer to find your image file, your photo file, and then you upload it. and. Uh, then you're presented with it and you can uh, change it at any time. Okay, so let me see. We're on, we're ready to go to step number two, which is to um, create your first product. So let me switch over to a browser here. And I'm going to close this video window because it is covering up part of the screen. And like I said, it's more important for you to see the screen than it is for you to see me. As long as you can hear me, you know I'm here. If for any reason, if someone loses audio, um, go ahead and put something in the contents and let me know that you can't hear me. All right. So this is my shop and I am logged in. Um, at the top of the screen is on the right side, you'll see your profile name or your name that you set up. And by far you do most everything in the area called behind the scenes. When you're behind the scenes, you see a lot of information here and I'll try to talk about some of these. But right now we're primarily talking about uploading a work of art, okay? So I'm going to upload an image and 
it's it's very very easy it takes you to this screen and I will tell you that I have issues getting this particular single upload process to work in Google Chrome but it does work pretty well in Firefox so that's what I'm using today so you need to find an image that you want to upload and there it tells you here what the acceptable file formats are unlike the profile photo you cannot upload a, a gif file or gif file however you pronounce it the dot gif is not acceptable for your images in this area you've got jpeg jpeg and png files those are all acceptable they can be up to 25 megabytes in size and as far as width and height the number of pixels there is no limit so please make your images and your files as large as possible but staying within the 25 megabyte limit and you'll see why that's important later so you can browse and search through your computer or what's really kind of cool about this particular option is you can drag and drop a file on it and so I've dragged a file over and dropped it into this area and you can see the file name and now I'm ready to upload it your mileage may vary depending on your internet speed all right it's been uploaded and you can see that certain fields are already filled in. I use Adobe Lightroom for my image files and I put this information in there. I'm not sure what other software um, Fine Art America would be able to pull this in from, but I bet as long as it's in the metadata of your image file that it will pull it in. So it's automatically filled in the artist name, a title, the medium, I've set that as a default and we'll talk about that later. It's pulled in keywords that I already have selected and it's pulled in the description. If you don't have a medium, you can type your medium in there and you can also select what category this particular artwork falls into. And this is really not a photograph. It started with a photograph, but I've done a lot to it. So it's much more like digital art than photography you can add more keywords and remember that keywords are things that people who come to fine art america would type in and have your image show up so if you wanted someone to see this image what kinds of words would they type in i can think of a few others but this works for me for now you can add more information to the description if you want to talk about your experience creating this piece of art um, anything that seems to make a connection between you and your potential customers is is a good idea if I've made a mistake I can click the change image button and upload a different file all right now we're ready to move on we'll move down this screen a little bit also if you're viewing this on an on an iPhone if you put this on full screen or a uh, sorry cell phone of any brand <laughs> go ahead and make this a full screen preview and turn your phone sideways and you should be able to see a little bit bigger screen okay so we're looking at display options here and you've got three options one is a watermark if you're not familiar with watermark you've seen them but you may not have known what it's called they're usually the semi-transparent text that appears over an image if you choose to enable this the words fine art america are going to be plastered across the top of your image although it'll be semi-transparent um, it does to me interfere with viewing the image and so i leave this off it also sometimes confuses people who are not used to buying things online because they think that that comes on whatever they purchase. And so it might discourage them from purchasing any of your work. The next option is a full resolution preview. Now this I do like. 
because the what is presented to your viewers is a small image and people sometimes like to get really up close and see your image uh, you know in that way so what fine art america does is creates small squares of your image at full resolution so this is another reason for you to upload the highest resolution file that you can so let's take a look at what that actually looks like so here's a photo or it might be a painting i'm not real sure but as i move across the screen and I'm going to see if you can see this little square showing up with my mouse. The image is broken into several squares. And so if your customer, let's say, let, we want to look at this little astronaut a little bit closer. So I put my mouse over the astronaut and you can see the green square that shows up. When I click, it loads a full resolution preview of that area. And notice now it's got the watermark on it, which is fine. I'm okay with that there because I really don't want someone copying a full resolution preview, even if it is just a portion of my work. Okay, so we can close the preview. And we'll go back to our demonstration. So full resolution preview is, I think, a good thing. Um, it allows people to see your work at its full resolution without actually seeing the entire image, which helps prevent uh, theft from the online portfolio. WorkSafe, that option is, the I think is pretty self-explanatory. Is this image safe for viewing at work? If someone's boss looks over their shoulder and sees them looking at this piece of art on the job, um, are they going to get in trouble? If so, then you need to say this is not work safe. Galleries. You can create galleries and you can organize your work into these galleries. And I've got a few galleries here. And so this really doesn't fit into any of the galleries that I currently have created. So I am not going to add it to any galleries. Um, you know, it might fit in my landscapes gallery so we'll do that there are groups on fine art america so if you like to be a part of online or virtual groups people who are interested interested in the same kinds of things that you are you can um join a group on fine art america there are some there are lots of them out there now this next one is pretty interesting Especially if you're a painter, a sculptor, um, doing sort of mixed media, those kinds of things. If you want to sell your original artwork, the original piece, not just a print or something else from your uh, artwork, but if you want to sell the original artwork, you can enter the height, width, depth, uh, the price, and if it's for sale, you can say yes or no. Now we kind of get into the meat of Fine Art America, which are the products that are available for sale. And so, like I said, even if you're not interested really in making money with your art, you're just looking for a free or inexpensive way of putting your stuff up so that others can see it. You still have to fill, you don't actually have to fill these out. If you erase every single one of these, then um, people won't be able to buy anything. But I kind of think, what the heck? If I can make a few dollars, uh, that's fine with me. Because you don't have to do anything. You have your art there. If someone wants to buy something, they add it to their shopping cart. They pay for it. Fine Art America collects the money, creates the product, and ships it to the customer. And then they deposit the money in your bank account. So it's a pretty passive way to make a little bit of money. Um, all right, so let's let's go start looking at these prints. You can see that based on the image that I have uploaded, which it tells me up here is 
1562 by 2412. Those are the pixels in this particular file sizes. And so this allows me to sell prints at the sizes that are listed below. Now, what I am going to add here or change here is my markup. This is how much I want to pocket every time one of these sells. Why can't I do something larger than 15 and a half by 24? Because I didn't upload a large enough file. Okay, there wasn't, it's not, the resolution isn't enough so that it can go any larger than this. So I don't even like to sell eight by fives, so I'm going to just take that out. And now I, the potential customers won't even be presented with the option to buy an eight by five. Six, six and a half by 10 is the smallest that they're going to be able to purchase. This option here, allow cropping to standard print sizes. Now it says it's recommended. That's an, I think that's entirely up to you and how you feel about your artwork being cropped. Um, if you say yes here, then buyers are going to be able to crop your image to standard print sizes like 8x10 or 11x14, etc. Now this kind of makes it easier for the buyer because they can go, go out and buy a frame somewhere. If you have odd sizes, like 15 and a half by 24, um, they can't so easily find a frame. And so to get custom frames, you know, that can be pretty expensive. So my feeling is I would go ahead and allow it. If not, chances are they're going to buy the closest and then they'll probably, just, they'll probably chop off part of the, the print anyway to make it fit into a frame. All right, greeting cards. You see the options here. Now what we see here um, is a little more detail as far as the prices. You can sell single cards, packs of 10 or packs of 25. And you add your markup. How much do you want to make for every single card? What's the base price? Per card, okay, base price is how much Fine Art America is saying it costs to make the card or that it's going to be their cut, how much the card is going to sell per card or per pack. Throw pillows. This is kind of a cool, cool product. I remodeled recently and was really looking for some decent throw pillows. So I know that they can be quite expensive. Right now, the mom markup is $5 for all of these. So if someone's going to buy, pay $27 for a 14 by 14 pillow, I'll get $5. Yeah, like I said, I don't have to do anything. This is pretty passive. But what I don't like is the image that's showing up on that product over here. So you can customize this and change this so that it looks more like you want it to look. There are a couple of things that you can do. You can change the image size. And so when I click on this slider, I can increase or zoom in on the image or I can decrease it and zoom out. I still want it to show the entire thing, but I'm going to drag this image down just a little bit so that it looks more like I think it should look. So that I think captures more of the real essence of the image. So I'm going to close the customization window. And a duvet cover. Okay, now this I always kind of gives me a chuckle. Um, based on the size image or file that I uploaded, this is what it's saying my duvet cover will look like. Well, I have a pretty small image. I'm really not interested in duvet covers at all. So I'm going to erase all of that. I'm not selling it. Shower curtains. 
Now there's no limit on uh, the file size for shower curtains, which I think is, is very interesting. If somebody wants to buy a shower curtain, sure. It'll probably be a pretty pixelated image, but go for it. And I know $65 is a lot for a shower curtain, but I kind of might want $10 from that. Tote bags, pretty cool. I'm going to change the image here. And notice that as I'm doing this, my signature is being removed from the image. If you're not okay with that, then you don't have to offer any of these products at all. You can just leave them all blank. I don't do phone cases. I don't do t-shirts. I don't really care for round beach towels. Towels are okay. Yoga mats. All right, I just started doing yoga and I know people spend a lot of money on yoga mats. But I'm gonna customize this image a little bit and move this over. Like that better. Spiral notebooks, fleece blankets. I don't do battery chargers. There are pouches. We can customize that as well. Another tote. And mugs. Um, I have done mugs before, but usually the image is horizontal and not portrait. Doesn't work too well, I don't think, on the portrait. All right, so wall tapestries. Nope. Um, digital picture frame streaming. I would turn that off. The last time I investigated this, I couldn't even see where they were offering new subscriptions for people to buy a digital frame and have pictures just stream to their, their frame. So turn that off. Facebook synchronization. You can play with this if you like. I don't like to have anything automatically post to Facebook for me. I don't like the way that Facebook crops images at different times. And so I like to be in control of when and how my images are posted on Facebook. But if you want to test it, go ahead. Uh, what's going to happen is every time you upload an image to Fine Art America, it's going to be announced uh, in Facebook for you. And the same thing with Twitter. The problem is I forgot that I had this turned on and I wasn't ready to announce certain things, um, but people were seeing, seeing the announcement. So I turned this off. I've answered all the questions. I'm going to submit. So now I've uploaded my image and this is what a potential customer or buyer sees if they click on your image in your portfolio or your list of artworks. They're presented with an image, the full-blown image on the left. And this is, remember, you've got the uh, full resolution preview option turned on. So if someone wants to look at a specific piece, they can click and zoom in, so to speak. I've got the title, I've got the description, and it's got the artist's name. I can uh, go to Facebook or Twitter with this if I want. But here's where I think Fine Art America shines. It's the ability to provide the buyer with a visualization of what this product might look like. So we'll start with framed prints. Once I click on framed prints, it brings up a framed print. And so you can see what this is going to look like with certain frame choices, with certain mat choices. So if I decide I don't want a plain black frame, I click on the frame tab and then I can scroll through and find different frames. And then I can get a preview of what they look like. That is not it. What is this one? Mm. 
we'll, not my favorite, but we'll stick with that one. A mat. You can scroll through the different colors of mats if you want to include a mat. If you don't, you can turn it off. You can also change the width of the mat. And you're immediately presented with a preview. We turn the mat off. Yeah. We'll just leave it that way for now. You can also choose paper types. And then um, if there's an option for a finish, you can do that. The other thing that's pretty cool is in addition to just showing a version of the framed print, Fine Art America also shows previews of what this work would look like hanging on a wall. And they've included elements, other elements in the photo or in the image as well, so that you can get an idea of the relative size. And you can determine whether it is the right size or not in this case. So I think that's pretty cool. The other thing that it offers is there are some 3D options. So let's go back and do a canvas print. So now I'm, I'm seeing, ah, this is my canvas print. You can see the thickness or the width. There is a 3D option, which is kind of interesting. You can rotate the work so that you can see the back. And you can turn it all around. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that's really, really, really neat for your customers is there is a mobile app that your customer can download. They can pick your piece of art and they can actually, with the camera, their phone camera, visualize it on their wall in the correct size and everything. So the, it sort of, um, overlays that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> it overlays your work on top of a live view of whatever wall or whatever their camera happens to be pointing at all right so let's go back i'm going to go back to the framed print and well i can frame my canvas that's okay we'll look at that that's pretty awesome too so let's change the size just so you can see how the size of the artwork changes. Now you can see it's a little bit larger over that sofa, but it's still too small for that situation. So let's look at what else is on the screen here. Um, there's a description that I entered. Uh, it ships within two to three business days. Here's my frame that was selected. No top mat, no bottom mat, and the dimensions. The other thing that you might have seen up here is the price. And these are the price. This is, we're going to look at the price details. Remember that I am logged in, and so I am the seller. So this is not the actual price that the buyer would pay. The buyer would have to add back all the discounts that I would get. But let's take a look at each one of these items. So the print itself the price is $17.28. The materials, which is the glossy finished canvas, is $104.06. The frame, $55.50. They aren't charging anything for the finish. $6 assembly charge. And then you can see in red the discount here. That's the markup. That's what I said I wanted to make. Right, so there's no reason if I'm buying this for me to pay myself $12. What's also interesting is that if someone else were buying this, I would get a little bit of commission on the materials and the frame. Now that doesn't happen with every product, but on this one particular one, it does. So you have to add back 
these total price, these red prices to get what the customer would pay. Once you're done adding all of your work, you'll get something that looks like this. Now I've got a few galleries up top. So you can see I've got some abstracts, some other galleries, and then um, just all the different artwork. So this is how you can share your artwork with your family. Uh, they can browse through it. Just give them your URL. Everyone gets a unique URL whenever you create your account. And so I think this is, it's a pretty cool tool. You get a lot for free. Let's look at, let's go over real quickly. How much time do we have? Facebook Live may be cutting us off in a bit, but we'll look really quickly. Come here, thank you. The premium features. There are, um, you can get a, a website and some shopping cart widgets. And so it helps you with some of your, your marketing. But other than that, you don't, you don't really have to spend the $30. I would start with the free version, use it for everything that you can. And um, then if you need something else, go ahead and pay the $30 to get the premium version. Okay, so that is it for the presentation. Let's go back. Does anyone have any questions? I can see the chat. And so if you have some questions, go ahead and type them. If not, let me tell you about a couple of our upcoming events. On April 16th, we have what we're calling Thirsty Thursday. We're doing a virtual art walk since things are basically closed in uh, downtown Bryan, which is where we typically have Art Step on the third Thursday. We're gonna do a Thirsty Thursday. And I would invite you to just grab your favorite beverage, sit down in front of your computer and tune in. And we're going to have some of our artists present their work and talk about their work. So it's, it's similar to Art Step, where you get to meet the artist and hear about their work, but we're gonna be doing it virtually. And then we have our next presentation on May 4th at 6 p.m., another Facebook Live event, this time in the evening, photographing your art like a pro. So what you'll be able to learn a little bit in that is about how to get the best image that you can to upload to your online portfolio or to submit to galleries or anything, um, publications, contest, those kinds of things. So again, if you have any questions or you're interested in learning more about the Art League, you can go to our website at bvartleague.org or you can email us at bvaltexas at gmail.com. So thank you for your attention today. And I hope to see you again at our next event. Bye.